Taiwanese food mukbang. I'm gonna be joining with Jamie. Yeah. And I'm gonna be joining with Gina. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is actually a live stream, and if you missed it, you can check her version out with the chat and everything at twitch.tv slash chue. Uh, but Jamie's gonna be our weird food specialist. And uh, Gina has our desserts, and I brought all the entrees. So yeah, uh, I made a post the other day about how real are Asian stereotypes, and we're gonna read off the chat, and maybe the live chat will join us too. So, so yeah, let's get going and start eating because Jamie is really, really hungry. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so should we go over kind of what everything is? Sure. All right. Um, all right. Let's start with what you brought. All right. All right. I brought noodle jianbing. This is a uh, beef wraps. Right here, it has scallions and thinly sliced meat in there with a little bit of sauce. I also got a zha pai gu, which is Ooh, fried pork chop. That's pork very. Chop. Yeah, Jamie can start eating. Go for it. Cool. <laughs> Let her do. It. Just take both. I know oh. you can eat both. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. So this is basically like the Taiwanese version of katsu. If you guys are familiar with like katsu go from yeah. Japanese cuisine, this is the Taiwanese version of it. All right, what next? And then uh, we got. I said this is zha mian. That's what they gave me, but it's more like minced pork with bean curd for me. It's not really like the real zha mian I'm used to, but yeah, they usually have like cucumbers in it. Yeah, like, and it makes it a little bit more refreshing. But I, I felt like every place kind of has its own taste. Yeah, so I guess it's a Taiwanese version from the restaurant I got. And over here is da da chang bao xiao chang. It's a Big little translation is big <laughs> sausage wrapped around little sausage. I thought tongue is like intestine, isn't it? Oh, is it? So okay. So big intestines wrapping yeah. small. Okay, there it goes. So we're eating small. intestines. <laughs> well, this is not actual intestine. It's a sticky rice cake over a uh, Taiwanese sausage. Wait, I never knew that. I thought it was like actual intestines. So I never That's what I thought too. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's different. Okay, maybe like a chung. Yeah. I, will, I will eat it though if it's not the I think the intestine. side is wrapped with intestine. Because right here, look, yeah. right Yeah, that's the intestine. intestine. Yeah, so there actually is some intestine there. So. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll try it. Um, we actually have two of that. Uh huh. I picked this one for another restaurant. Oh, it's cooked a little bit nice. differently. Yeah. And then I have one more. This is uh, their. I said rou fan, but uh -huh. this is lo zhao fan. So I guess that's what they thought I meant. I, I don't know, maybe my Chinese is not good, but this is Miss Pork Rice. Mm, and it's very, favorites? very popular in Taiwan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jamie, what, did, what weird foods did you bring <laughs> Okay, so I brought... Mm -hmm. This is a uh, tripe. It's kind of like the, the Mexican menudo, right? Yeah. Tripe, yeah. So it's really delicious. It's, it's chewy. flaming orange. It looks like Cheetos or like Doritos. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a sauce. It's a sauce, okay. yeah. Is it spicy? It, uh, no, it's not spicy. Okay. Oh, did you do this? Oh, and everyone's no, no, no. favorite, Chicken Feet! Alright, it's actually my favorite from the Did you just E.T. touch yourself mm -hmm. with the chicken feet? Mm -hmm. Foot? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is Stinky oh, Tofu. Oh, Stinky Tofu. Is it the boiled kind? Uh, like the it's a boiled kind. Yeah. Okay. I like, usually like the fried kind. But this, uh, to, to some people, they say this smells like sewage. I like the smell. Maybe I'm just saying. <laughs> Matt said it uh, smells like uh, sticky socks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well it is fermented. Yes, and this is a uh, century egg. It's black on the outside and then green on the inside. It's weird because really our Chinese is called pi dan, which is like skin egg, leather egg. Yeah, well I mean technically the, the skin is kind of like leathery, leathery yeah. Yeah. you touch it. Jamie's just touching all our food on my face. It's okay. <laughs> Whatever. Right, I'm my putting it in my mouth. Ah. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. Jamie's hungry. Okay. What else? Uh, this is actually my favorite noodle. It's a rogue meat food. Mmm. Right. And then noodles, right? th this place actually have the better um, noodles because the, the noodle, the way the noodle structure is mm. different than the other restaurants. Okay. Oh, my own it's like very old, like Chinese Taiwanese style. Okay. Yeah. You and then Oh, and then this vegetable is very special. Okay. Whoops. Whoops. I got it from the Olympics. It's called a vegetable. A <laughs> time. A time. <laughs> uh, technically, it's, it means like a short vegetable. And it's in Taiwanese. Like, uh, a, like I. It's yeah. like a, yeah. a, 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 a No, it means really? like like short vegetable. Oh, it's a time. Because when so I see it like, on the menu, they actually put the letter A. Yeah. But it, it's because ea sounds like uh, a, so then mm -hmm. they called it a tai and then ea tai. Because yeah. when I was growing up, I always asked my mom, if "There's like a tai, where's b tai, where's vegetable b?" You know, <laughs> well, we can't have technically, vegetable a without a b. Technically, 
technically this vegetable is for poor people like mm -hmm. back in the days because this vegetable grows a lot in Taiwan mm, yeah, and yeah. Um, it's like all over the place and in, um, instead of eating anything else that's more expensive they mm -hmm. eat this one because like, it's like very Thai, right? Kongshin Thai is also considered like peasant food-ish but it's actually really good oh, I love Kongshin Thai oh. I love Kongshin Thai Kongshin Thai is like vegetables. I don't know what it's called in English but Kongshin Thai uh, is like water, water oh. press uh, water press? water press? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's mm -hmm. like hollow in the center and it's really good, mm -hmm. like sauteed with garlic and all that stuff. That was the only vegetable I would eat when I was young. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to show you guys some of the things I brought. So this is called liang ban gan si in most places. This is like, um, you know how Koreans have side dishes called ban chan? This is kind of like the Taiwanese version of side dishes. Usually served in small amounts, it's just for you, like an appetizer. It's for you to nipple on while you wait for the entrees to arrive, family style. And they're made of like bean curds or some form of tofu. There's like usually cucumbers and like carrots, julienne, and put in there. And I think that's celery, but it's served cold and it's really refreshing on a summer day. I used to eat that like noodles when I was a little kid. And <laughs> another one is this is another form of cold noodle. This is a suan la liang mian, which is literally translates to hot and sour cold noodles. Again, Taiwan gets like. Like this week, the weather forecast is a high of 90 with 85% humidity, so in other words, shit gets hot. And so <laughs> we have a lot of foods that are served cold to kind of help you ward off that summer heat. That's so very simple food, but it's very tasty. Okay. Oh. I'm poor, maybe I should throw that in my garden. <laughs> I also brought some drinks. Jamie requested this one. This is her. Honey milk tea, half sugar, half ice with Honey aloe vera. You know, this is the Asian version of your Starbucks drink, which is super complicated, you know. Mm. <laughs> you can drink it right now. Oh, sweet. Can you my soy milk? Soy milk. Uh, and Gina brought over soy milk. I love soy milk. I need a small straw. Uh, this is a winter melon green tea. Oh, nice. Dong gua Love it. Winter melon tastes like, Skin it's milk. a weird kind of sweet to me. I never really liked it. I found like people either really like it or they don't. Mm. Stop, please. Sorry. I'm cool. Jamie's yeah. our bartender. I love, I love soy milk. I could drink this all day, no problems. What's, I want to try this. Their version of the da 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 bao xiao cha. Big intestine or big sausage wrapped in oh. sausage. Because technically, like sausage, Taiwanese sausage mm -hmm. is wrapped in like mm -hmm. cha. That's how you make the sausage, right? Yeah. Mm. Rice is very glutinous. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, you, you're, you're, you're sauce. Oh. <laughs> now sounds like elevator music. Oh well. Big sausage. You're here, Serena. Yeah, you're a new face, Chris. I assume. Okay. Oh, we forgot to go over this one, but this is a really common fare. And um, Taiwanese, like, snack eats, call it shaozi, which literally means little eat. So Small eats. It's a snack. Appetizer. Yeah. yeah. Not really appetizer though, because like you do you eat twenty big as appetizer? Technically it, you call you it, it's in the appetizer section. Okay. Yeah. Unless well, you go to the breakfast chances. place. So it's basically a green scallion pancake. You can see the cross section here. It's a lot of green onions in there. It's like a special kind of batter. It's firm and thick and also savory. Mm. Okay. It's just perch flavor. Mm. Alright, it's so sticky. Alright, so let me start reading off the post I got from John Ballard. Honestly, I'm tired of this topic, but comments I hear every day require this discussion. We all bleed red and we all have different cultures. I hope we can all be well beyond this. Okay, I know this is a criticism and I agree with you. I'm not trying to like, oh, all Asians do this. I just want to have fun with this video and I just want to say like, oh, how real for us are the stereotypes applying to us. So this is just for fun. Don't take it seriously. I don't want to offend anybody. It's just, you know, for people who aren't familiar with the Asian culture, I want to show you guys the culture, the food, and you know, who we are as Taiwanese or Chinese people. So there you go. All right. First stereotype. Why do they suck at driving? LOL, no offense from Bart Maria. I got this one, I got this one. <laughs> we don't suck at driving, we're really good at driving. You wanna know why? We make our own lane. We're <laughs> opportunists, okay? When there is an opportunity, but when you're driving in Taiwan, like people don't drive in their lanes. <laughs> and they don't park anywhere they want. And, 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 like, and, and somehow, I've never seen an ambulance when I'm in Taiwan. Right, right, right. right? Like there's never a car accident. And if you want to see, um, people had to drive between like a hundred scooters, <laughs> and nobody gets hurt. 
So that's my take on it. <laughs> okay, my I want to add on to that as well because in Taiwan the streets are very narrow and it's very congested. Not everybody can afford a car, and public transit is so good that most of us don't have to drive. Uh, but so like residential areas, there will be it's usually like two lanes, right? Uh, this way and then the opposite direction of traffic. But people in the residential areas park on both sides, so they tur put they turn a double lane into a single lane, but cars still have to pass both ways. So when you're driving there, you just have to do like these crazy maneuvers and then like pass pass another car going the opposite direction <laughs> in a single lane. And people just do it like this is nothing. Like a taxi driver will race down these narrow streets with like on like. 40 miles an hour! Kind of like, I'm here thinking I'm gonna die, but it's like, oh, this is like, it's like eating breakfast for them, you know? It's, <laughs> it's natural. That's all true, but I admit though, I cannot park. I'm really I, bad. I'm really bad at parking. Look, okay, I don't know why, I'm just super bad at parking. I can never reverse park, that's way too hard for me. Okay. Alright, so there you have it. <laughs> this noodle's good. Yeah, actually. In my experience, the worst drivers aren't Asian, they're just old people. Oh my god. 40 miles per hour in the fast lane on the freeway, like completely ignoring stop signs, like driving in the opposite direction. <laughs> I, I seriously feel like one of my friends said that people should drive, um, old people should drive their age, so they're like 65 should drive 65 miles an hour. I just think like all people should have to retake. Mm -hmm. The driver's license mm -hmm. more often because mm -hmm. some of them are like really, really dangerous I agree. To people. Mm. Um, I used to work at a dumping restaurant, and we will have these old ladies coming into the restaurant, and she goes, "I survived another day of driving," and I'm like, "If you have to make that kind of comment, you you should not be driving." <laughs> All right, from M Way. All right, she he's got three. One, Asians always seem to work harder than other race. I think this is like goes back to a cultural thing, but again, it's a stereotype. It doesn't apply to everybody. I know, I know people from where I grew up who are very lazy. I know people who are just like you know they do the bare minimum to scoop by. But there is an emphasis, like there is the idea instilled in us since we were young that if you work hard, you will you know you will get you will get what you work for, and. Um, I think it's good. Like I, I do notice that people from Taiwan tend to have like a really good work ethic, mm -hmm. but there's also downsides. I feel like we don't balance work and life pretty well. Like um, at one of the companies that I work for, which is an Asian company, you know, everybody would just work massive overtime. We didn't really have a personal life, and it was just expected of you. And this type of work culture I hear is even worse in Japan. Yeah, people Japan is. Are like slaves. That's why in Japan there's so much uh, suicide rates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they just focus too much on work. It's actually it, uh, like like emphasized in, in mm -hmm. Asia because um, you don't get tips. Right. And everything's included. Right. And then you don't get uh, overtime hours. Mm -hmm. You don't. If yeah. you work overtime, you're just working. Like, you're just the working. Same amount of yeah. pay. So. And I, I think it's also because of the overpopulation that's in mm -hmm. Asia that everybody's all constantly fighting for job. And then also um, when you go to college at high school, it's not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. You have to work extra hard for that one spot. I'm gonna go for the knife, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <We're back. laughs> but for me, it's like, um, a lot of our parents, they're like first generation immigrants, right? They come here to try to give a better life for the second generation, which is us kids. And um, they're coming to a new country, they're at a disadvantage, they don't know the local laws and customs and cultures, or like the holidays, or just, you know, they don't know the language very well, and they had to fight harder than anyone just to, you know, get a job or do anything. So I think part of that is, they try to pass that down to us, and just I think the things we value as a culture is different. Okay. Like America tends to like pride more on you know individualism, like self-expression, creativity, right? Standing out from the rest, and then and it's really common not just in Taiwan but just most of Asia that you like blend in with the crowd. You don't do anything that's mm -hmm. controversial. Are you guys? I forget. Are you? Are we born here or not? I was born in Taiwan. Oh, boy, Taiwan. Okay, so I'm the only Americanized here. I'm actually learning <laughs> from them. I'm learning from them. So um, I didn't know some of these things. And I actually haven't tried the stinky tofu. I'm going to try the stinky tofu now. It's, I'm, I'm kind of scared. Hey, it's really good. Oh, there's the socks. Hold up. Um, this smells really bad, guys. Really? Yeah. I wanted the fried one. It smells delicious. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, no, no. It's okay. I'm, I'm like, sauce. I don't. 
cabbage. It smells so good. <laughs> so a lot of Americans, I notice, and this is again as a stereotype. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I notice a lot of Americans grow up like being really picky eaters. They don't like eating vegetables. Curd is a prime example. Um, and I feel like it's because like most of the vegetables in America are so raw and salads. Does it taste good? It's okay. I just have to ignore the taste. <laughs> It grows the smell, I mean, I just go like, just eat it like this and it tastes good. Yeah. But it smells oh. so delicious. Mmm. Yeah. But in Asia, we cook all of our vegetables and we cook it with oil, with a lot of garlic and a lot of flavor. Oh, garlic. I just feel like it tastes better. Oh yeah, look better. at it. this amount. There's a lot of garlic just right here. You can see all that white stuff, it's mm -hmm. garlic. So vegetables taste good to me and garlic, well, garlic tastes really good to me. So that's why I always grew up liking vegetables, but I didn't like eating salad. Alright. <clears throat> it is hard for Asians to accept a compliment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true today. I find with that every time. I think it's, I know, I, it, it's because like, I feel like Asian parents grew up with the same handbook as uh, induced as much verbal abuse on your child as possible. Well. <laughs> yeah. Tough love. Yeah, tough love for sure. Like my mom would never compliment me. Anything no. I did was never enough. No. Yeah. And this is just for my experience, right? So. When I, and, and she would tell me things like, oh, and people are complimenting you, they're just trying to get something out of you, it's not real. Yes. So it's like, one part is like the stranger danger oh. kind of thing, Sorry. like, uh, what do you really mean by this compliment? And the other part is just because, like, we grew up without a lot of validation, so it's natural that it becomes harder for us to accept. And also, I think we have, well, at least in my family, we have the mentality of, um, when you are accepting too much compliment, mm -hmm. you are stuck up. Mm -hmm. There's no yeah. such thing as confidence. It, it goes from like no confidence to stuck upness. And and I had I had a hard time differentiating what is confidence and what is right. being yeah. stuck up. Right. Yeah. Right. Because humility is a value. Like you know, it goes back to like Confucius, whatever. He says this is what the ideal person should be. And it's like humble. It's like studious. It's like hardworking. All those traits. And uh, I think part of it extends to you know gift giving and stuff. You know yeah. how when we when you're giving a gift you're supposed to refuse it like three times before you accept it. So compliments are like a gift, so it's it's hard for us to accept that too. It's like oh no 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 I can't take this. Okay. Also it's rare for Asians to say I love you to hug and hug mm. with their family. Yeah that one. What? What is that? <laughs> and what's love? Like the closest my family comes to is like make sure you eat a good dinner. Yeah it's mm. most usually food. You love that's me, how Asian, yeah, yeah. That's how Asians love you. They just feed you a lot. And if you don't finish your food, then they guilt trip the shit out of you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and every bit of rice that's left in your bowl is going to become a pimple on your yeah. face. But Senji wasn't a picky eater when you were younger. That's good. It's so hard for me to be with a picky eater because food is such a big part of my life. Like, if they're picking out all the foods that I like, then I'm just like, okay, what now? Um, I uh, I can't understand how like uh, you know American people can have leftovers and they get rid of it so easily. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it's killing me. Let me eat it. I'll eat it. I do think it's a bad habit though, because we force ourselves mm -hmm. to clean the food yeah. even when yeah. we're already full. It's like easy to gain weight and it's not healthy for you. I was so, really fat. Yeah. One, <laughs> when I was kidding. One of my biggest accomplishments as an adult is having leftovers and like. You know what? I don't want to eat anymore. Yeah. I'm fine leaving food on the plate. Oh, because I had a sister mm -hmm. who never finished in anything. Mm -hmm. She's like 90 pounds throughout her life. Oh yeah, every yeah. family has a Disney right? trash can. <laughs> yeah, so I was a trash can and she was like, oh here, have some more, have some more. And I'm like, okay, as a little girl, like, you know, I, I never know any difference. And, I'm, and whenever I eat, my family just gets really happy at me. And they're like, oh my gosh, we'd love to see you eat. So Japanese have their version called gyoza, which is just jiaozi. But um, we call it pop sticker in Chinese culture. We call it like you see it when you cook these, they stick to the pot. That's literally why we call it pop sticker. It's guo mm -hmm. and it's typically a breakfast food. Um, it's basically like a elongated dumpling, and you would dip this in soy sauce and vinegar or like spicy sauce, and drink it with soy milk. It's really good. Mm. Sherry Hagen, why is Asians look younger than what they really are? I, I don't know. <laughs>
I don't think it's like we're looking younger, but it's just like... Other people age faster. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. <laughs> we're just Why like, do you guys age faster? <laughs> we're just like... Difference, right? Like um, I think like we have more oil in, in our skin. It's genetic mm -hmm. in some way. Is it? Because um, I don't know. Do like, you think it's lifestyle or diet? I don't. Know. But I know Koreans are very big on keeping your skin like. You know what it is? What? I think I know what it is. What? Sunscreen. I don't. Know. Western cultures don't really put on sunscreen, but it's really emphasized in Asian culture. What is it? Mm -hmm. It is. It is. And UV, UV rays are like the most damaging thing to age your skin. So mm. if you put on like as a, as a culture of the people, if you're more accustomed to putting on like um, sunscreen when you go out, it's natural that your skin at least looks younger longer. Yeah. I, I also think that like maybe because your skin mm -hmm. like. It goes to uh, sunscreen and stuff right. like that. It's moisture in your skin. And we don't really go out that like much, drink, right? Like yeah, we don't. activities and stuff, we're like, uh, no. We just... <laughs> well, that's another thing. Um, for Asians, the beauty is being pale. Mm -hmm. That's complete opposite of Westerners. You want to mm -hmm. be tan and dark. Right, that yeah. would be really ugly. Right, so they'll stay <laughs> indoors. They'll cover up when they go out, even if you don't wear sunscreen. Like my mom used to wear like these long ass gloves when she was driving. Oh my gosh, have, have you not seen the, 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 the welding mask? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those things freak me out. Everybody know what Jimmy's talking about? Oh. Oh. No! Cause <laughs> mm. was still a trash can. Yo, you have been out to the mall, Oh, someone wants us to do a May chant. <laughs> what? What's that? Wait, with the chicken feet? <laughs> okay, let's do it. Wait, what? Oh, teach me. With the, the chicken May feet. chant. So, when you go to a Japanese May cafe, usually they'll cast a cutesy spell to make your food taste better with the magic of love. So, we're gonna cast a spell right now. You can just hold it up on this chicken foot right here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how awesome? What are we doing? Uh, okay, we can do, we can do Oishi Maho Love Who Be With You Okay Okay, so it goes Oishi Maho Love Who Be With You Okay, for real this time So that means um, delicious Magic. magic love beam pew pew and we're beaming our Wait, how do I do it? Do I just hold it? Yeah. You can just hold it. Okay. 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 You're the right. I'm the recipient of the spell. Okay. Bless my okay. chicken feet. Okay. Eat me san. Oishi maho love beam pew. It's chicken feet. Hey. Mmm, so good. <laughs> Love me magic. Gino thinks I look like a hobo. Yes, that's true. Tech has a hobo like look to him. Cause he he has long hair and then he has like he's like one of those Asians that struggles with the grow a beard, so it's like scraggly. I, I wanna say something about this chicken feet because a lot of people actually ask me. I know probably nobody's asking that right now. But it's actually really good. The skin just falls off. Which one? Oh okay. the chicken feet. Uh people ask me how do you eat chicken feet? Like, like how, like what are you eating from the chicken feet? This is what happens. You put it in your mouth and you separate the skin and the the um, the, the tiny little bit of flesh <laughs> from the bone. And eventually, you will like it comes out like little tiny bones. Yeah, this one's actually really easy to eat. Um, the the really low quality ones, it's hard to get out of the skin, but this one I can just slurp it and the skin falls right off. Yeah, it's supposed mm. to be like hot roast. Eh? Like when you cook something really uh. long time, the meat <laughs> just falls off. It's really tender, right? Yeah. And that's what we're going for. Alright, the Soul Forge 360. Why do a lot of Asians crouch when smoking cigarettes or gambling? Well, that's the Asian squad. The Asian squad? I don't know. I was just like, there's no chairs outside, but I want to sit. I don't want to stand. That's why I also, the the toilet's all on the floor, that's why it's oh, true. Oh yeah, so <laughs> we have toilets that are on the floor. Oh, oh, I'm so glad. That's like my favorite thing being here. It's like no squatting toilets. Yeah. Hmm. And in Asia, there's a lot of little food stands. Okay, I'm going to do the most unladylike thing ever. I'm going to live demonstrate the squat. So oh. these, <laughs> these toilets, they're like... <laughs> They're like, you know, what's a eclair? Imagine like an eclair donut, which is like this. That's what the toilets look like. And obviously, and it's like on the floor in the hole. 
like on a hole in the floor. So obviously you can't just sit on it because you would be sitting on the floor where all like probably people who can't aim are just like there. <laughs> so you have to like get close but not, this is only a girl thing. You have to get close but not really. So what you have to do is you have to go like this. Oh god! <laughs> no, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> and then you do your thing. So that's how you squat in a public toilet. And I, I just want to say before these kind of public it's just a, um, a ditch, literally, okay? So, when I was really young, when I was in Taiwan, I went to this uh, school, elementary school in the countryside, uh -huh. and for the bathroom, we literally just had a ditch, and then Ooh. you don't really flush it, because there's no flush, it's like a ditch that shares like five stalls. Oh. So then, to flush it, you literally like pull um, this water tank thing on one side of the bathroom, and then the water will just go down the ditch and then all the way through the other side of the... And it flushes everything up. Mm -hmm. So then technically, like, you don't even get that much privacy. <laughs> That's right. And everybody shares the ditch, so then you smell and sees oh everybody from... Stuff from everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so wait. Um... Pups12 asked... Wait, not that one. So I want to ask something. Oh, Chris asked... What's the difference between an Asian squat and a slop squat? They're super similar. I don't know what a slop squat is. I don't know what a slop squat is. Slavic? Slavic? Mm -hmm. sure. But also, another thing about the squat is uh, in Asia, there's a lot of little food stands where like they, they literally just push the cart and then they go around. It's not like a truck or anything, but it's a cart on a bicycle or a cart that they mm -hmm. push around. And those kind of restaurants there's no seating for it. Mm -hmm. So then they literally just give you a bowl and then a, a lot of the workers would just squat on the side of the street and eat their food. And that's how like we, we kind of roll. <laughs> yeah, the street vendor yeah. food is uh, it's usually very mobile. You, it's like you give you like bags or like chopsticks mm -hmm. so you can eat while you're walking around. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. In the old times in, in Taiwan, at least, mm -hmm. uh, they don't give you bowls. They give you a plastic bag for soup and juice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Right? Now it's like all upgraded to like cups and like, you know, these kind of things. But previously, it's like a clear plastic bag. And then they just tie it with a rubber band on top. And then like if you have a drink, then right. it's just a straw yeah. on top. You know what I mean? That's how they used to serve the soy milk, even when it was hot. So mm -hmm. it's like this bag is too hot. Uh, let's see. Calling to you, Andreas, and bye, Chris. Have a good grocery shopping trip. All right, do the classic one. Helen Hibbert Brown. Are ages all really good at math? No. <laughs> no. Sorry. Easy no. <laughs> Those who really with my stream know I have a shirt that says Asian and bad at math, just so everybody knows. I'm really bad at math. I actually. almost failed basic econ. I like math. My sister hates math, though. Um, I don't know. Really I got it. <laughs> the reason that I think we have to stereotype, and um, I have a unique experience on this because I went to from pre K to first grade in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So very American. And I went through classes there. And when I went back to Taiwan, I was supposed to go to second grade. But we quickly found out that second grade was too hard for me, so I pushed back the grade and I went to first, like, first grade again. And specifically, the math was too hard. So it's not like we're good at math, but they do teach more advanced math earlier on, mm -hmm. so we can struggle and hate our lives very early. <laughs> right. But that was why, I think. Uh, I came to America when I was second grade. Mm -hmm. And in second grade, when I was in Taiwan, I was learning decimal points already. Right. But when I came to America, you guys were learning uh, double digit additions. I know, right? So I was like, huh? <laughs> So, so math was a breeze for right? me. That was the only thing I actually ate, like not ace, but like got really good grade on my SATs. Yeah. Other than that, everything was like really good. No, really when horrible. I came back to I was like, I already learned all this mm -hmm. math, you know? So it's not like um, I'm good at math. It's mm -hmm. like if you already know something, then obviously it's gonna be easy. Everybody else is learning it for the first time. And then like in Asia, if you're bad at math, they send you my mom had like a stack of textbooks this big full of practice math questions that I had to do on top of my homework and even if I was bad at math she basically beat it into me it's like and just learn it and in, ta in Taiwan they made you memorize everything mm -hmm. instead of thinking about it logically mm -hmm. um, also another thing shoot I was gonna say something else in Taiwan oh, thank you yeah <laughs> anyway oh. Asians are really big on studying mm -hmm. like 
My dad didn't let me go out to hang out with my friends. He's always like, study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, for division problems, this right. is how you tell uh, if a person is Asian or from an Asian country mm -hmm. or studied math here. For us, you know how like if you do a division problem, it's like 27 remainder 2. You know what I mean? Like you, you round up the, the uh -huh. remainder. But in Asia, they expected you're expected to do at least like five decimal points. Yeah. So they would be like 27 dots, 0, 3, 5, 6, 8. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't do all that, then like you're a fail. <laughs> yeah, you fail the test. Mm -hmm. So those bad drinks are some of the best drinks. Oh, this new one too spicy for me. Oh, oh what is too spicy? She, I, what is one? Yeah. Oh. yeah, Swan Lao Liang Mian. The hot and sour, <laughs> okay, spicy, not high and sour. sour. No. It's not spicy at all. No. It just doesn't spicy. <laughs> the bats were good, but when it's hot, it's fucking hot. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so good. Um, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. How am I? Did you I have am to eat right? food, so yeah. I'm happy right now. My first experience with the Asian squad was when I worked in tech retail. I'd see the Asian squad down reading the back of the products for a really long time. It was fascinating because no one else ever did it. Hey, when you kind of sit, you kind of sit. Do you guys also remember using a abacus? Oh, yes. yes. Oh my god, I go to abacus school. It's like, what is the point of this? <laughs> it's like a calculator. <laughs> hey, clubs. Oh, what are you eating? Yeah, oh my god. Like, does any other Asian culture do Japanese people use abacus? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Wait, My boyfriend went to Korea? Abacus school. I don't know about Korea. Okay. From Christine S, do you get offended when people uh, uh, appropriate your culture? Or you mean like... And for me, it all depends on the intent. Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean? Kind uh, of just being... Appropriating culture like how like... There's this example, there's like this like eight year old white girl mm -hmm. who had dreads and a bunch of like black people jumped on her mm -hmm. and saying she was appropriating their culture, like stealing it for themselves, which mm -hmm. historically that's what cultures do. They steal things like yeah. all of American holidays are basically stolen from the Mayan calendar or something like that. But um, well, yeah. Christianity is stealing everything yeah, from pagan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get it because they come um, from what I understand, they come from you know, a, a culture and a people where a lot of things were taken from them and they didn't have the same opportunities as everybody else. So I understand the hurt and the history behind that, but for me personally, if someone wants to like dress up like in Chinese clothes or eat Chinese food or whatever, as long as they're doing it with good intent and they're not like fucking it up, like they're not giving out wrong information, they're not I mean, like, we're all being disrespectful, then I, I think it's fine. So it's kind of like if Americans dress up cosplays, then yeah. they're, 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 well, they're... I mean, we're well, all the cosplay is a hot, yeah. hot we're, a we're appropriating thing. right now. We're yeah, being we're Japanese or we're not Japanese. No, no, Matt, please, Japanese people. <laughs> but I know. Like, the only time it bothers me is right. what, um, in movies. They right. don't really hire the right race yeah. or right. whatever. Yeah. Well, that's that's really white bothers me. That's why washing is different. I mean, no, even um, when Chinese act actors try to play Japanese characters. Yeah. It, it actually really mm, bothers me. Yeah, like, uh, I know, uh, I know. The, the geisha movie, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, it, that one was really bothering me. I know, well, that's me too. But mm -hmm. I feel like it's a huge difference. Like, someone dressed in like traditional hanfu versus someone dressed up in hanfu and like going around doing this. Right? Yeah. I find that really disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And that would be like, okay, no, you're just being racist. But that kind of leads us yeah. to the next one by E. Michelle. Do you get annoyed when other people try to speak their language? Um, I know Japanese people get very fascinated because they have katakana just for um, Amer for English, so they don't mind uh, Americans trying to speak Japanese. It's like, oh my god, that's so cool! And then I know with Koreans, they uh, like the aunties in the restaurants when you speak some kind of like, say, thank you, something that they get very um, they get really giddy and cute. But and when it comes to Chinese people, when you start to say stuff, they're kind of like, don't speak. Don't. <laughs> I don't know. For that's my experience. And for me, if you're like, I feel like if you're trying to do it just to impress people, I get annoyed. But if you're mm -hmm. just trying to practice or like be respectful, then mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Especially when like you know like we probably all had this experience. Some yellow fever dude <laughs> comes up and be like, Oh, are you Chinese? I know Chinese. Ni hao ma. <laughs> like, am I supposed to clap for you? Oh, I'm so in love. Like please, I learned that when I was like fucking two years old. <laughs> I mean, I tried to impress my boyfriend when I first met him. I was, I, he paid for dinner, and then I was like, "Hon Tony, Konnichiwa this." What? Yeah. <laughs> what? 
I was I, I meant to say forehead. I'm I meant to say Hontoni Arigato this, but you know, I was kind of nervous and then I kinda of got tongue tied, so I was like, Hontoni Konichiwa, this is like hello to you too. <laughs> Oh, spinach with runny eggs sounds so good. I love egg. From Nada Sira, do Koreans and Chinese still hate Japanese for they did to their women? <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it depends. It depends on the generation. I know my grandpa personally still harbored a lot of hate for Japanese mm -hmm. people, and my grandma used to tell me horror stories about Japanese police, uh, Japanese so uh, soldiers when they when they um, occupied Taiwan, there were stories like, oh, you know, they had the men work the fields and the wives would try to bring lunch to them. And then I guess um, I guess something happened where they smuggled weapons to them to start an uprising, oh, so wow. they banned the wives from bringing lunch over. But then, like, they were working all day and they need to eat. So some people, like, pretended to be pregnant, so they hid the food under the bellies and then they smuggled food to their significant others that way. And so sad. they started yeah. catching up on it by feeling the tummies and they would send them home. Um, but they fast forward and they put like a thick pad over the rice so wow. um, they couldn't tell the Skills. difference. So then they evolved to they would just take a knife and stab anyone who was pregnant on the train. <gasps> so if it was actually, they were actually pregnant, they would lose the baby. So That's those great. are some of the horror stories, right? We like from Taiwan at least. So I understand why. Um, my grandpa was so upset. Like I put my major as Japanese because I didn't know what I was gonna major in, and I heard that picking like a weird major, like a, something that's not popular, helps you get into a school more. And uh, so I picked that, and I wasn't even serious about it. And my grandpa flipped out. Oh, he was so mad. Mm -hmm. and, uh, for me, I don't. I feel like we are a different generation, and we should be mindful of the past, but we shouldn't let that control us. Yeah. Well, I um. Like I already said, mentioned earlier, I'm the least Asian person here, so I think my family really wanted me to grasp being an American, so I don't even know any of this. I barely know my own culture, so I'm learning a lot from this. I didn't know what any of this, this is, but um, you know, my boyfriend is Japanese and my grandparents are okay with it, but they don't have anything against Japanese or they try to forget it because they, they want to be like, oh, I'm American and you know, gotta move on from the past. Okay, so the, the Asian parent ideal <clears throat> ideal significant other for their kids goes the same Asian culture <laughs> to at least be Asian to um, to like everyone else. <laughs> right? Actually, I, I'm gonna be really racist right now. Oh god, I know what I'm gonna say. Yeah, I mean, I no, no offense to anybody, but I just wanted to make a... I, I just want to point this out, like, Asians are very racist. Yes, we are extremely racist. My parents think that it's okay for me to date anybody Except for black people, I'm sorry. It's a serious issue in Korea yeah. still. Yeah. Um, and I admit it. Like yeah. that's why we want to try to be better than them and try to educate them. Part of the reason is there's so few black people in Asia that mm -hmm. they don't have a chance to get to know them and be like they are just people like everybody else. Funny because there's a lot of well, whenever foreign people mm -hmm. in Taiwan causes trouble, it makes big on the news. Mm -hmm. So there were actually a few cases of um, black people passing AIDS to Taiwanese girls. Mm -hmm. So then that was like an extreme thing in our, our family and we were talking about it and like, oh, see, that's why black people are bad. And we're like, no, no. no. stupid. You know, that, it, it's just ridiculous, but it's like a very, Strong stereotype. Yeah, so. but we suffer from the same thing, yeah. right? There's like um, Chinese tourists have notoriety for just mm. wreaking havoc anywhere they go, and it makes it so when I go somewhere, people automatically, you know, are suspicious of me because I look Chinese, and they think I'm going to be as bad as the Chinese tourists when, you know, I'm just Chinese me. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean, racism is an issue everywhere, anyway. So, I think every culture has their own problems with it, but. We're, we're, you know, we want to move on from all that. Yeah. Just like how mm -hmm. we're trying to move on from the stereotypes, we're just having fun with these stereotypes. And we're trying to disprove some of them. I yeah. think, uh, right, there's for every culture, there's going to be so many different people. There's going to be some who fit your assumptions, and there could be a lot who don't. Uh, a West Tacular says, like, they have the same racist issues in other cultures as well. Yeah. I gotta walk my dog later, Mark Sabi. From Julius, Julissa Melinda. Um, do, do you agree that most Asians know how to cook very well? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> They're more Asian than me, guys. 
<laughs> okay, I, 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 can't even I, I, I got a story. Yeah. So I actually burnt <laughs> a pot <laughs> boiling water. What? <laughs> So, so when I was in college, um, I ate a lot of instant noodle. Like I love instant noodle, and instant noodle egg goes really good with playing video games. So this one time I was like cooking noodles, and I was like, oh shit, you know. But I just got into a raid. I got to do the raid, and then I totally forgot about my noodles. And I went back. The bottom of the pot was like red. <laughs> so then it like literally burned through the pot, and it wasn't even my pot. It was my roommate's pot because I don't uh -oh. even own the pot. <laughs> Yeah, so that was my story. <laughs> my sister can't cook, cook at all. Wait, Clock, you're from Austria? That's so cool. Lederhosen. Wait, is that like the male form of tights? Lederhosen? Or is I, like I think... Wait, is it the skirt? It, no, the skirts are cute. Oh, okay. I don't know. Mexican beer is the best. I don't know about that, but I want... Mexican beer? Isn't that just water? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm kidding! I kid! I kid! That's what Bobby told me. <laughs> no, no, I never have like water. Mexican beer. Like, I knew, oh. I knew someone who got drunk off of a single Taiwanese beer. Mm, I love Ta Asian beers. I can't drink at all. It so. tastes like very. It tastes lighter. Like it doesn't taste heavy, and I don't feel like full after I drink it. Crown Face is Mexican beer is just water. Actually, it's like when you go to Mexico, because I went to school at UCSB, which is really close to the border, so a lot of people would take like trips over to Mexico just for fun. And they, we were told that if you go there, don't drink the tap water if it's not safe. So instead of water, ordering water, you would just actually order beer, and beer was safer to drink than water. Huh. Hmm. Um, Auntie Ran. Asian Americans tend to have a circle of friends of Asian Americans. I wonder if that is done consciously or it just happens naturally. Mm. I think it's just you can like connect more, or like have more similarities. But I think that's just random. It just depends on who you are because you're gonna have a it variety. It depends. Of yeah. Like um, I went to uh, when I went to school, we had like Asian clubs, and I would see some people there. I feel like the people who tend to cluster with other Asian cultures are the ones who. Um, immigrated later in life, so their English yeah. is very good, they feel more comfortable speaking their native language, so they try to seek out other people who they can communicate with better. Um, but for people who grew up here, like we tend to have a mix of friends. I'm not sure I have some Asian friends, but it's because I joined the Asian club to try to practice my Chinese, and um, I still have a lot of non Asian friends. Scott, you gotta find your own Baisano or Baisanos, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, like, a lot of times, sometimes, a uh, culture will clash too. Yeah. And then you. In oh my god. Pockets of your life, you feel like you can relate more to. When, I'm, when I'm cooking at um, Pinihana and they're non Asian families, and I see so many little kids do this in their eyes. Oh my god. Oh, no. There no. are so many, so many people do that. Like, I don't want to say it because there's no Asians that eating at the table, yeah. but when I'm cooking for them, I look over and all the little kids are like, look what I have, it's a flag. I'm like, no. No, no, you're offering your food to the dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, <laughs> All right, let me let me try this up. I actually don't like century old egg, but I will try it. It's a uh, it's black egg, very squishy. It? it looks rotten. Is this supposed to be a duck egg, Jamie? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. It's a chicken egg. It's a duck. I think it's a chicken egg. Fermented chicken egg. What's yeah. the thing around it? Wait, wait. wait. Oh, so cool. Yeah, oh. usually you break that into little pieces and you mix it and you eat it with the coconut. And yeah, on porridge. Oh, it's really good on porridge. Uh, yeah. Pita and sorozo is like a, mm -hmm. like what Asians would eat as comfort food when they're sick. Like their version of a chicken noodle soup. It's, it's alright. I like it. <laughs> I, I, I can stand it more when um, the black egg is in porridge, like they said. Mm. It takes away the gaminess more. Gaming? Gaming. Oh, sorry. Gaming. Video gamer. When you have the egg Baby, fermented, where? it actually turns translucent like this. It's kind of cool. I heard like pink one eggs when you boil it, it turns the white, the egg whites turns translucent too. Oh, oh really? really? It looks like oh. a rubber ball. Penguin eggs. Where do you get penguin eggs? Uh, Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> right, from, from Becky, do all Asian families live together to save money? Mm -hmm. Yes. But I, said, I don't I think, think it's saving money. I think it's it's more of you, you have the culture of taking care of the elders. Yeah. Wait, what? what uh, Asian families live together. together, save money. 
<laughs> Honestly, I just thought so my mom can be a helicopter parent forever. What's a helicopter parent? You know, my helicopters hover, so they're always hovering around you, oh. like, look at oh. micromanaging your yes. life. Asian parents like to ma micromanage your life. They like to be in your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's great on That's state. why they, they feel more relevant. <laughs> I'm not sure. I ate, I ate a lot of pidan, century old egg, when I was younger, man. If that thing is supposed to make me smarter, then that fucking work. <laughs> My mom just tell me fish makes you smarter because of the omega-3 fatty oils or something. I don't and know. She would make me take fish oil and that shit is nasty. Well, I don't know. My, my family told me eating fish makes you smarter because mm -hmm. there's bones in there and you have to avoid it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they told me to take some weird shit, okay? <laughs> they told me it was good for my memory. Be like, you don't want me to remember all the shit you did to me. No. <laughs> Tiger mom. And my sister loves to eat the tail, and it's like really a lot of bones in there. So then my mom's like, see, that's why she's smart. My oh dad my likes to eat the eyeballs. Oh. oh. My sister and dad love to eat eyeballs. Fish eyeballs. Yeah. From Tom Shipman, why won't Asian women go tanning? Is there prejudices against dark Asians? Mm -hmm. I already told you guys why Asian men won't go tanning because. Dark is like low life in um, Asian culture because it means that you're out in the fields working a lot, so then you're tan. You're a of farmer. That. And well. also, um, there's a saying in Chinese that "yi bai zhi san chou." Oh yeah. That, so if you're white, like imagine if there's a big light on you, so then all the flaws are like disappear. When you tan, like all your flaws, or if you have like a first mark or something like that, it will show up more. It's just like you know, if the um, the lifters. Mm -hmm. Like they, they put oil on the cells so then they look darker so then their muscles are more defined. Yeah, so then your your, your imperfections won't yeah. show as much if you're white. Yeah, translates to pale skin will hide three ugliness, three flaws. Yeah, my mom used to tell me that, but I, I feel like she was just repeating what her mom told her and her mom told her before that. And that's why I'm glad that I have the unique opportunity to have lived in different cultures so I can understand, you know, it's not just, there isn't just one way of viewing things. Growing up, I, I get yelled at a lot because I was always outside. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like to play basketball, I'm very sporty, I'm always in the sun. Mm -hmm. And then my, my family always like looks down on me because I'm so dark. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh my gosh, you're gonna be so dark. And they call me like little black person. <laughs> and then like, I don't know, they just always make fun of me because of my dark skin. My, my grandma too, she was like, oh my god, you're so dark. When I go swimming and running, I like being mm -hmm. tan. And they're like, nobody's gonna like you yeah. because you're so dark. I'm like, oh. It's funny, you know, funny enough, it's actually a trend in uh, Japan now for people to have blonde hair, dark skin. Mm -hmm. Is it the kangaroo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen the guru girls? Oh my gosh, they're crazy. <laughs> All right, and from Aver Cox, I'm part Japanese, and it bothers me when people refer me to me as a Jap. Is there a term that bothers you? By the way, love your beautiful. Well, thank you. Jap actually is an offensive term, so do yourself a favor and it's take kind of like lesson. saying the N word, to, or like yeah. saying chink. Yes. Yeah. You don't. You can't just Sorry. shorten Japanese to Jap. That's not no good. No. Grow some cultural brains. Grow some global vision. J P is no bueno. Like uh, what's the uh, like what do they call Mexicans like? Red bag? Uh, wet bag. Wet bag. That's bad too. It's like it's it's all on the same level, in my opinion, as that. So don't refer to any Japanese oh, people. Like I know. Mm -hmm. Um, I heard zipper face. What the hell is a zipper? The, face? Yeah, cause our eyes are so tiny, so it's like zipper. I don't. How know. is that a zipper? I don't know. Can we have or... at least some creativity with coming up with these names? <laughs> I used to date a white guy, and then his ex girlfriend hates me. I mean, and then like stalks me. So then like she would call me all sorts of things like behind my back and then I would like hear about it. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Oh, that's a zipper face. I don't know. Maybe she just made that shit up. She crazy. <laughs> it's zipper head. No, it's zipper head. There we go. I don't know. <laughs> Alyssa Vasquez. Why do Asians pick their nose in public and look at it? <laughs> what? <Do you? laughs> I think our Maybe the older Yeah, the older thing. I see them doing a lot yeah. of weird stuff. I, I don't think they, they care. Yeah, yeah, they don't care anymore. They don't care anyone. about anyone. Yeah. By like, the time you're old, you just don't give a shit. Alright, Jenny M, why do Asian girls love white guys? <laughs> it's not a preference. Well, I mean 
I think she's referring to a very specific sure. type. Okay. I don't think. Well, Koreans are very obsessed right. with French. Food. I know um, that. I don't know. Oh, I didn't know about that either. Well, um. actually, Asians. If we go back to the whole prejudice on skin color and emphasis on having pale skin, obviously white people appear desirable because okay. they have white skin. Asian men tend to be more feminine. I mean, nowadays there's a different trend where K-pop guys are cute, they're yeah. whatever, right. feminine. But like, going back a little bit further, right. Asian men tend to look more feminine right. and they tend to be more chauvinistic right. as well. So, and, and a fondness towards white guys because they talk very well, as in they kiss up a lot. Like they tend to go, oh you're so pretty, oh my yeah. gosh, I've never seen anybody so pretty like you. Whereas Asian guys, they, they tend that. to not they do that as much. They just want to be manly and macho. They want to pretend to be manly and macho when they're not. Mm -hmm. no, which goes back to uh, why do Asian never say I love you, see? Like Asian guys will yeah. be like yeah. really affectionate and, and then mm -hmm. white people are like, Oh honey, how was your day? Oh mm -hmm. sweetie, I love you. Welcome home. And, and it comes more naturally versus forced. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, my take on it is that there's people in the American culture who is like weeaboos, they have yellow fever, sure. they really like certain Asian cultures. But there's the reverse of that in Taiwan. We have Hanzhu, which is like the Taiwanese people who fucking love Japanese culture and they want to like become Japanese and stuff, and they only think Japanese products are good. And we have like the Xiha, which is like they're really into Western culture, like hip hop, whatever, and they think like Western products and like Western electronics are better, and that they also think Western people are better. It's and not a healthy mentality, but there are people who think that. Way. And I, I, I think also it goes to like a humbleness of your own culture kind of thing, where you look upon other cultures. Okay, so you know how like people says fake it till you make it, mm -hmm. right? So uh, European. Western culture tend to be more confident in themselves, so then we kind of like, oh my gosh, you're so confident in yourself, you know, I want to be more like you, whereas our culture is more humble. Yeah. You, see, you see that contrast there? So then you're drawn to... Drawn to what like you're not used to. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's kind of the same. Opposite yeah. attracts, yeah. Oh, yes. I don't know, I think it goes Asian people and white people, and it just really depends on the person that you are. True. Especially since we have more people, like more Asians who grew up in the U.S. and their mentality is more similar to Americans. Mm -hmm. I don't really think race is a factor, at least for me, when I'm dating someone. I, I mean, I, 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 I also think it goes back to like family culture too. Because when you're marrying a, a Asian guy, technically you're marrying their whole family. Yeah. yeah. Whereas when you're in a relationship with a American or a Western less person, less. it's less mm -hmm. like you know, family, right. marrying right. into the family, whereas like... Because we have dramas less, about yeah. this, oh, how like when you marry into someone, you become a slave of the mother-in-law, <laughs> like abuse you, like an evil stepmother, yeah. and it's like, there's so many horror stories about that, and obviously it's a drama, it's like a soap sure. opera, so it's very exaggerated, but there is some truth behind yeah. that, and yeah. If I was dating an Asian guy, I would feel like probably pretty insane pressure if I had to meet their I, side of the family. I, well, when I was younger, I dated a lot of Asians. Uh, one of my, my ex-boyfriend's mom used to always talk shit behind my back but then like she's like really nice in front of me oh, and so I would hear all these things like my, my, my boyfriend at the time would tell me like she thinks you're too dark she thinks your eyes are too small and I'm like what the freak but then whenever I see her she's like oh hi it's nice to have you over again and I'm like it reminds oh, me of the evil Korean moms in the K-drama you, if you watch if you watch what? If you watch K-drama, you know how evil the Korean malls are. Oh, yeah. Dude, they're like fucking malls. Don't do that! But, oh. No, 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 no. I want this job! <laughs> Where's my job? <laughs> I still want to interrupt you. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. What about the actor that plays Loki, Tom Hiddleston? I think it's pretty cool. Why I don't know. I didn't know what the question is. Do you not do it? Nobody saw that. I didn't even think about it. You guys are dirty. No, oh, just me. Just me. Hmm. <sighs> 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 Alright. Blessed and beautiful hipster. Are all Asians skinny? No. <laughs> oh, you know what? In Asia, if you're not even overweight. If you're a little chubby, yeah. people make fun of you. Yeah. 
Yeah. Even like the people who are selling everywhere. clothes. No, 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 no. Even the people who are selling clothes make fun of you because generally Asian size is one size fits all. Literally, yeah. Yeah. we don't have like a large, small, medium, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I remember, uh, I want to say a few years ago when I went back to Taiwan, yeah. I went to shop in the uh, the underground metro section. And then this lady was trying to sell me a shirt, and then my mom went with me, and then we're like, oh, I kind of like this shirt. And it was kind of tight on me, because I feel a lot. And, it, and then the girl was like, oh my gosh, you're so chubby. It's okay, you can just suck it in, it'll be fine. And I was like, oh my god. Yeah, like oh. uh, a lot of people who are over here complain yeah. about, oh, there's no like um, plus size models, there's not enough clothes that fit me. But there are specialty stores here. Yes, it's still hard, but it's gonna be so much harder in Asia. Well, nowadays it's a little better. better. Nowadays it's better though. Last time I there's went, actually like three year, three five years ago, none of the clothes fit me. No, I couldn't get any clothes in China. I was fat. Maybe like a big coat, but You're that's not all. Even it. fat. You're like a normal size. Yeah, but in China, I'm like fat. It's like plus I have big boots. Okay. So, Chinese people. Oh not yeah, boots. yeah. Uh, <laughs> clothes are not meant for big boots. Yeah. In Asia, okay, or well, in Taiwan at least. I think like girls our size mm -hmm. should be around 45 kilograms, whatever that is in pounds. Yeah. So then if you're like 50 or above kilograms wise, then you're considered as fat. Multiply by 2.2, so that's about, I'm um, probably just around 100. Yeah. So then most girls, like our size, mm -hmm. are about 100 pounds. Yeah, we're skinny. <laughs> and if you're anything above 100 pounds, well maybe like, maybe 100 to like 110. If you're 120 or 25, oh god forbid, like, oh my gosh, you are fat. Yeah. And then people will make it known, like, oh, are you sure you want to finish that? Aren't you getting a little fat? I mean, like, random people on the street. Yeah. I, and yeah. I also think, like, the culture here mm -hmm. versus China, Taiwan, Japan, or whatever, there's a lot more walking involved. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And then, like, there's definitely drinks. Europe, too. Europe, yeah. And there's definitely more variety of drinks here. All I see is soda. Yeah. yeah, and then you know, yeah, in so Asia, there's tea and unsweetened tea and water that you can get for free and not pay seven bucks for at the amusement park. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. Like soda in America, I feel like it's sometimes cheaper than water, and that's just that's really stupid. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, and, and, and also the the um, climate in Taiwan mm -hmm. is is it's like a literally sauna. yeah. You're, you're so literally like living in a sauna every day. You go out of your door and you're like completely drenching sweat. So that's like literally a workout just to get out of your door. <laughs> ah, sorry. Oh, today we're going to eat Taiwan food. Oh, yeah. So my friend just came back. Uh, she's from Taiwan. Yeah. 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 And he looked at like the, the thing that calculates how many steps you take and he walked 10 miles even though he was eating so much. Yeah. So he, it's possible to eat a lot there and still lose weight. I literally so much walking. average around 10 miles a day when I was in Taiwan too. Maybe it's also something with the food. Maybe we're not using like high fructose corn syrup. Well, high fructose corn syrup was a huge thing in Taiwan for a while. It was oh, like really? a food trend and then they discovered all the bad things about it. They're like, okay, don't use this anymore. Okay. But, there you go. It kind of depends. Like, I think we eat more vegetables. Yeah, that's a oh, big yeah. thing, yeah. And uh, we don't really use butter. Yeah. yeah. Um, You're right. I huh? think our oils are considered healthier. We use like nut oils, like koi pa yo, like sunflower oh, oil. Really? And uh, peanut oil, I think... Actually, I don't know if peanut oil is good for you or not. But I think peanut oil is a little bit better than corn oil. Are you cool? It's about there. <laughs> hey, show you the loop. No you gotta sake. rest, so this is your Oh, can I have the other soy milk? We have soy milk today as our drinks. is a very common drink in Taiwan. We don't have, we don't usually drink dairy because um, it's uh, lactose. We're lactose in Taiwan. <laughs> we have soy milk, and then Marina also brought um, some tea. And we have, I have like a mini boba over here. Okay, so I was trying to look for this. I read this early. Ohana maka, why are, okay, hold well, up. Okay, so Asians have a gene which doesn't let them handle a lot of liquor. Yes. Yeah. True. I oh, can't. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. No, yes. because there was this Asian guy that we call Joseph, literally like wine god, because he could drink and drink and chug a whole bottle of vodka and not get drunk. Well, I mean, it's it's not everyone, of mm. course, but um, Asian. That's why you know the uh, he still Asian get really red though. Huh? He still get really red. Well, that's still allergy. <laughs> like when when your face becomes red when you drink, that's an allergen. That's that's. Um, you can't process the alcohol inside or something. Like that. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's why you, your face becomes more red when mm -hmm. when and 
the Asian globe and stuff like that. I see, I see. And then I was looking at this one. Why are Asians um, this is tiny when rice is a carb? They like Gina mentioned. I read in an article. Rice is a carb, but then like we don't eat bread, which is what American people do. And there's gluten and butter. So like they, there's some kind of chemical there that holds the fat more in your body. So to make you like fat. Mm -hmm. I don't know the chemical, um, like the actual science of it, but if you want to look that up, that might be a reason why even though we eat a lot of rice, we can still be skinny. Yeah, because rice is made with like usually milk, uh, sugar, butter, eggs, so you have all these other things going into your carbs, whereas rice is just rice, we steam it in water, we don't add anything else to it. Yeah, I know, I know in um, like in Benihana where I work, you guys, the fried rice is just full of butter. Oh. Like, we just eat steamed white rice. Yeah. Plate. And we also processed food. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah, we don't have as much processed food because Taiwan has such a good climate for growing things. Um, all of our farm produce is really good and it's really fresh. We don't have to add too much for it to taste good. Like when we, when we used to export our fruit, um, other countries would accuse Taiwan of injecting syrup into our fruits because they taste it so good. It's like, hell no, we're just on the equator line. We're fucking like, we're like Baller. the best Baller. climate <laughs> for okay. growing these type of fruits. Taiwanese mangoes. Ooh. Oh, so good. Like, it I tastes have, like, different. The mangoes here are like this size. How many mangoes are like? Yeah. Which is so good. And it has more like fibrous stuff in there. Right. Which let's move on to one of these desserts. See, look, like minimal, minimal butter. It's maybe on the bread. Bar. Actually, I don't even okay, know. Okay, about portion control. That's not volunteer. You go to Taiwan. Oh yeah. Our our um. Our, our small serving our size. small servings at fast food places are kids size meals, and then Drink um, is this size. our large is an American small. So it's not like we control it; it just it's what we've been used to our whole life, and that's you know. And one of my friends, he said um, when he went to Japan, he went with a tour group, and um, they were going. You know how like Japanese like subway trains are like um, during rush hour, yeah. it's like really really packed, and uh -huh. they have police people show people in. <laughs> and I saw the, the Japanese tour guide actually. Oh, in Japan, we make our women flat-chested and our people small, so we can pack more of them into the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's hilarious. That's like he's supporting him. Dark often. Okay, and why do Asians like the number eight and wear red at weddings? Oh, I love red. Have you ever seen the traditional, like, the Korean, traditional Korean weddings too? They have the red wedding gown, and so does Taiwan. And um, they have like their own red veil. I always thought it was really pretty. Red is the color for um, joy and celebration. That's why during New Year's you see a lot of red in the decorations and all that. And uh, I actually have another thing on, yeah. on that. New Year's and decorations in red. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, there's a story about New Year's. Yeah, yeah. The reason why we, we do the, the firecrackers and everything. So uh, the story is every year there's a monster that will come and eat you. So you want to scare away the monster by playing a lot of um, the, playing the firecrackers, firecrackers and stuff like that. And yeah. the, the reason why you're supposed to wear red is because you show that you're hurt already. So if you're already hurt, then you're like, you know, dead me, don't come and eat me kind of thing. Oh, so okay. then like the, the, the evil spirit will be like, oh, it's kind of like, you know, the... the Zombies want fresh meat. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. And then also like every year during your year, um, you're supposed to have bad luck. Right? Yeah. And then it said that if it's your year, you're supposed to wear something red. Mm, I see, yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah, I'm wearing red. Are, are you a dog? There's a lot of superstition we're behind, dogs. behind Chinese, uh, Chinese culture and stuff. Uh, but for eight, eight is very easy. Chinese culture, similar to Japanese culture, we're very big on puns, especially number puns. So the number eight is fa, which sounds similar to fa, which means to get rich or to you know expand. And so that's obviously a very lucky number. It's like, why does America think 777 is the lucky number? For us, that makes no fucking sense. It's like, you <laughs> randomly roll the dice, like, okay, seven's gonna be the lucky number. I, I think that has to do with like casinos and slot machines. But in Taiwan, 88 is a lucky number. And then 6, 8 together is good. Because if you put a 1, 6, and 8 together, it says 168, which sounds like 168, which literally means you're going to have good luck all the way down the road. Uh, all the way down this path, which is just... Yeah. Also, I think 8 is uh, the Xing Fu. It looks like 8. Eight. Infinity? Yeah. No, 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 no. Am I saying it wrong? Huh? <laughs> I'm so bad at Chinese. <laughs> the, 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 the married... Oh, Chinese. Oh, she, 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 there. Oh, yeah, oh. see? Chinese is so hard. 
No, so like when when they make it like bubbly, the two part looks like eight and an eight. Oh, it does. It might be just me. Okay, never mind. Guys, I don't know Chinese culture. Don't listen to me. Look at this beautiful American. Between us, most breads are high in sugar. I see. Okay, mentality. Uh, Asia is a male dominant culture stereotype or truth or both. It's, it's true. It's yeah. true. Okay, I always like true. to say this story, but when my grandpa died and we buried that asshole in the ground, oh <laughs> on his plaque it said, loved by his wife, his sons, and his grandsons, because his fucking daughters and his granddaughters aren't important to put on his memorial plaque. You know, it's okay. It's okay. I like. I got better grades than all of my male cousins did, so he favored me when um, he was still alive. But you know, it's okay. I don't even. Think it's fun. Mm. Wow. Yeah, well, in my family, we have one. I have one male cousin, and he was always the favorite of the house. And he was so favorited that he was taken from his own family to live in our grandpa's house. Damn, oh my that's god! Some hard so then, oh yeah, hardcore level shit. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so he was spoiled ever since he was young, and everything he needed was just handed to him. And uh, <laughs> not to dog him a little. Yeah. But he, he now does it. He he decided he will never get married because he's fighting against that culture aspect because he's his only son mm. and he technically doesn't really have a job. He's like, oh, jeez, um, yeah. that's a that's a failure. I mean, but he think it's cool because still my aunt still will hand him money oh. and because he's like the the, the male of the family I and then my grandpa like, baby. Saved an empire yeah. in his past life or something. You know, the other thing is like, uh, well, back to what we said, like when you marry, you marry into their family. Yeah. Uh, Chinese have this like whole thing like, oh, like, jia, jia so like you, lo you raise your daughters up to lose them. Yeah. Especially like going back to ancient tradition, when your daughter gets married, you have to give jia zhuang, which is you basically have dowry. to send a dowry to the other family. So you're not only losing your daughter to another family, you're giving up a lot of your wealth to ensure she has a good marriage. So when you know, like they see daughters as like losing wealth and like losing, you know, the paternal family. Whereas um, also when the daughter marries, they take the last thing. so they're no longer part of your family. Whereas if your son has a family, they're continuing the family name. So and it's sometimes but it's so outdated. Re referred yeah, to as uh, women are water. So then when you're like married, it's for <laughs> oh, <laughs> so Then you're like water that's like like spilled like out. Yeah, down. and uh -huh. you're like what? Uh -huh. Serious? Uh -huh. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Alright. I think we're like almost full. Before we head on to zero, let's ask her one last question I have on here. Okay. What is one traditional good traditional good that your parents love but you can't stand? Like food? Food wise, I think it's something. Uh 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 what are those things called? Those 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 stick not sticky those I can't stand durian. Oh, I don't yeah. like durian. Oh, Yikes. I don't like the smell. I think it's worse than the stinky tofu, and it just doesn't taste good. It's like blech. What's that one tofu that's in the jar? It's like, oh, that one I actually like. Do you tofu in a jar? Yeah, tofu in the jar is like really stinky. Yeah, right? and what really is it salty. I don't know what it's called, but I know what it's called. I eat it with oh, porridge. Oh, is it the spicy one that you eat with the? Dough? It's not spicy. It could be. Oh, yeah, so it, it is. It can be spicy, spicy, or it can be not tofu, spicy. Tofu, ma. Tofu. Yeah. yeah. I can't take. Yeah. Oh, I actually like it. Really? I like that better than that. I like no. eating it with porridge. Oh, really? Uh -huh. I, I can't stand so yeah. food. Okay, we're going to start on some of our pastries. So this is a Which traditional, one? I would say this is more like a Hong Kong yeah. style egg tart. Take a red one. And it's smooth. Whereas so we have this other kind, which is like kind of brulee on the top. And this is called a bolo. Bolo style. Fat top. Egg tart. Traditional bolo style. And Jamie's gonna have the custard one here. Hi. Right. Well, this this is a translator like the, the place I bought it from called a pudding brio. Oh, this? Yeah, but it's just like custard in the middle. Okay. I love these when I was growing up. That's hot. Egg tart. It's a love hate thing. Mmm. Mm. So good. I really hate it. Thanks for the follow, Storm Gaming. How about what tofu natto? Tofu natto is a Japanese thing. I don't really think we don't have natto in uh, Chinese no. culture. No. no, no, that's a. Uh, I don't a, like natto. Oh, it's okay. It's weird for me. I can't stand it because I can't eat raw stuff, and natto is eaten with a raw egg. Mm. Ooh, raw egg sounds. Like no, no, no. I love. Raw you put it underneath like um, your ramen and just stir it together. It's like, I don't like it. Like, no. I can't eat sashimi, guys. 
Mm. Yeah, I can't eat raw stuff. Yeah, Reina asked us to go to an all you can eat sushi place and she didn't even eat sushi. I was like, okay. I just eat California rolls. Yeah. That's it. So this you can see a lot when you go to like dim sum places. They usually have egg farts for dessert. And only Chinese, I feel like, would make egg into a dessert. Yeah. We put no, 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 no. Uh, Americans have custard. Yeah, but custard is you make it with like milk and sugar and oh, okay. I don't know. For me, this just like actually tastes like it. Mm. Mm. It's weird because we put it in um. It's like an egg pudding. Look at it. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just love eggs. Huh? Yeah. It's just like eggs. We do. And we have our version of um, what was that called? Like the steamed egg. Oh yeah. Zen -zen, I, zen -zen. Yeah, that was really good. Mm. It's kind of like the egg you find at Korean barbecue. And mm. then. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love those. All the 7 Eleven have like these eggs and they're stewed in like tea and spices and soy sauce and then like they like um. So you know what? It's the pretty much like this. Like, it looks like this kind of. Yeah, yeah it, it turns brown, brown, but it has like all the spices and the flavors on the outside of the egg. It's really good. You wanna eat the meat fresh? <gasps> Oh fuck, I hate it. Oh yeah, I hate that I hate too. That. I cannot stand eating blood. So it's like pig blood and it's duck blood, but worse, they turn it into a form of jello because that's not gross enough. My sister loves that shit, I hate it. Yeah, okay. So, like it. Yeah, so pig blood, durian, uh, fermented, super fermented tofu. Alright, and we got Kurt to get this for us. This is um it's like grass jelly, a very traditional um Taiwanese dessert. Can I have some tea? Yes, have whatever you want. Oh, oh. Why is this so funny? Oh, and Taiwanese people love taro. We put fucking taro in everything. Why <laughs> what? I love taro. Am I being stupid or just I'm being really stupid, I can't. And this is from Shen Shen Meat Fresh. There's a couple of places in um, California that have this. But it's basically like a, it has a lot of traditional Taiwanese desserts. Oh okay. Oh, I did it. All right, look at that. Taro balls, Yay. boba, and oh, like sure. rice. Okay. These two are different, right? So I think the orange one is um, sweet potato, like yam. Uh -huh. Turned into this kind of mochi thing. This purplish one is the taro. We got our boba over here. We have our mung bean, which is green beans in Chinese. Uh, this is yi ren, right? I don't know how to say yi ren. Like almond? Kind of thing? It's no? not really almond, it's it's like... Oh, it's kind of a, a, a kind of grain, right? It's a kind of grain. Kind of like quinoa, but not really. <laughs> Asian I don't know quinoa. what this is called. Asian quinoa. <laughs> Asian quinoa. Yi ren, it's a... Uh, yeah, yi ren, and also xin ren, which is almonds. Uh. We uh, used to eat this religiously because my mom said it would make us whiter. Yes. <laughs> And oh my gosh, okay, I, I have this so, I don't like taro either. I love taro. So my mom said when she was uh, having me as a baby, mm -hmm. she ate a lot of um, ayu. Oh, I love so ayu jelly. So then she says when I came out, I was wired. And then my sister, when she was having my sister, she had a lot of um, uh, shen cao. Mm -hmm. So then my sister came out a little darker. <laughs> I was like, what the freak? This is uh, dou hua. It's Sweet tofu. It, it's a uh, tofu is some kind of like light ginger syrup, right? It has ginger. Yeah. It's usually ginger. It's very very light. It's really good as. I dessert. love this one. Um, mm. Like it's literally translated to tofu flour, but most places will call it like a tofu pudding or something. Yeah. Oh, uh, Zara that. says like shen shen is actually you can't find it. Well, you almost can't find it in Taiwan now. What? That home. Oh really? Yeah. Shen shen. I don't know. Meat fresh. Much like beans. Asian quinoa. I don't like ginger. So there's some places where the ginger in the soup is very prominent. I fucking hate it. I don't eat it. But this place I like a lot. I can't taste the ginger in it. Sometimes it's just a syrupy water. I love these sticky balls. Wait, is that oatmeal? No. Would no. that be oatmeal? No. Because no. it's not know. oats. Yeah, it's kind of like oatmeal. Mm -hmm. And this one has rice balls in it. We yeah uh, we take we take rice and we take soybeans and we turn them into every fucking thing. <laughs> it's like Japanese it's people. A, everything's made out of um, rice and soy sauce. I think in Japanese they would call it a dango. Yeah. 
And we turn so tofu into a put into a dessert. And we turn rice into a dessert. Everything's a dessert and a soup. Yeah. Mmm. Oh. Oh, I got a story. Oh. Most when my parents were younger, they, they, they their dessert would be like hong dou tang, you know, like yeah. noodle tang, because noodle is supposed to like the green bean is supposed yeah. to chill you during summer or something mm -hmm. like that. And when they were younger, um, they only really have a fridge because we were really poor. <laughs> and then um, they will leave the the soup out on the windowsill for it to cool down, oh. and then they will go play in the yard or wherever, and then they come back. And at night, like towards the dusk, uh, it gets darker, and then they start eating this. And then later on, they realized that it was full of ants. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Oh, <laughs> extra protein. Yeah. <laughs> and while that's a really um Chicken dessert sauce. soup, it's Smells a really like Asian thing because I talked to some of my people, uh, my friends here. They're not Asian. Mm -hmm. And then you know, we I take them to a Chinese restaurant. They have hotong tang at the end. They're like, "What is this? I'm like, it's a dessert." It's like a soup. <laughs> I was like, huh, I never thought of it. Right? I guess it is yeah. really weird. I was like, yeah, that is a that is a dessert. It's a dessert soup. They're like, what? You know, it's a hot dessert? What? I love mm -hmm. the shirukolo. It's like the Japanese version, the red bean soup, but uh -huh. it's always sweeter. Because Chinese red bean soup, they like, they'll put like the whole red bean in. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Japan, they'll like puree it down so it's very smooth. And I like that. Mm -hmm. It's really sweet. Japanese make good dessert. Yeah, they do. They're very, um, Detail. Mm -hmm. They are like really detailed. Like if you look at their Machines. pastries, it's like so like designs and like the wrapping. It's like it's hard to take out the wrapping because it's so carefully wrapped. Uh -huh. No, no, Japanese believe in um un unwrapping something very carefully, and then they actually save the wrapper. Mm -hmm. Japanese very uh quality over quantity. I'm very quantity over quality. <laughs> <laughs> We're just oh. cosplaying as maids, but I'm not real. This is not real zero. Sorry. We could be if it makes you happy. We <laughs> could be anything you want us to be. No, he's looking for his waifu. Oh. Well, thank you, you guys, so much for tuning into this mukbang. We didn't finish everything. It's actually a lot of food, so, and we we got a lot of stuff here. There's more than hundred dollars worth, I think. Yeah, definitely. definitely. <laughs> I wanted to have a counter, so each time we finish a dish, you'd be like, ding, 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 we just ate like how many dollars worth of food. <laughs> so I couldn't figure out how to get that to work. Yeah, it's okay. But yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoy, enjoy the, the smooth bond and learn more about Taiwanese culture and Taiwanese food. Comment down below what looked the most delicious to you and what you would absolutely never try. Maybe some of you guys would never try the chicken feed or some of you never <laughs> guys want to try the black egg, oh, black century so egg. So. Yeah, but if you if you go out and try it, send me some pictures, tweet it at me, Instagram, and I'll showcase you on the next move. I was like, oh my god, my viewer actually went to s and go out and try a century old egg <laughs> or something. That'd be really cool. Whew, okay. Oh, and don't forget, if you use the guest command, um, you can find out who the lovely ladies are guesting today. This is Reina. You can find her on YouTube at uh, Reina Wong. Yeah. This is Neoba. You can find her on Instagram as Neoba, right? Yeah, it's the last way you can find them. Uh, for me, I'm gonna keep the stream going for a while until we wrap up our dessert and just like chit chat a bit. So um, we can show you guys a couple more of the pastries we have too. Well, I'm gonna end the video here. So if you guys are interested in seeing the live chat and the stream on uh, Gina's archive, it's gonna be at twitch.tv slash two way. Link also down in the description below. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe, enjoy it, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.